welcome to Indian Center for Space Physics official YouTube channel. We all are aware about the Chandrayaan 2 mission. Today we are organizing a discussion session to talk about the known and unknown of about this Chandrayaan mission. Here to represent the show we have among us Mr. Devjit Chatterjee, a PhD student of Indian Center for Space Physics and director of this institute, Professor Sandeep Kumar Chakraborty, as our expert. Let us start this discussion and hope we will all enjoy. So, Professor Chakravarti, uh, why are we interested in Moon? Well, we are interested in Moon because it is there. It is our nearest neighbor in the in the universe. And uh, if we want to do space research, we better understand the nearest uh, celestial object. Yes. And so, Moon is the first target of any country, not only India. Uh, secondly, uh, with Moon, our relationship is very deep, as old as human civilization. Uh, during the you know agriculture, fertilization, uh, fertilization of the land, and for instance, um, these uh, calendars in most of this uh, religion, all of them are related to the uh, lunar cycles. And so, Moon is something which is part of our life. In many of the mythologies, Moon is actually considered to be female and uh, a sister of Sun, uh, uh, you know, who is Apollo and Moon is considered to be Artemis, for example, in uh, Greek mythology. In Indian mythology, however, Moon is considered to be a male character and its name is Soma, our Sombar is named after Moon. And in fact, uh, Moon is also liked by Krishna. In Gita, uh, Krishna said the Nakshatranam uh, Aham Soshi. Uh, among the nakshatra, I am the moon. So moon is uh, is always a favorite subject in uh, since e eternal time. So I think that it is good that we understand what moon. Uh, what were the major findings of uh, another countries uh, such as uh, USA or Russia uh, about this? About the See, mission? United States and Russia started their journey to the moon um, uh, up just after their organizations were established, okay. As way back 1959, um, they already started sending orbiter to the moon. Even 1966, they, they have soft landed on moon. So, uh, it is a, um, you know, um, the, the, they started understanding about the moon for a long time, from a long time. Now, earlier, they, they, there were a lot of reasons to send to the moon. Not only uh, reason that it is there, but the fact that there could be, the there Cold War was going on between um, United States and Russia. So during the Cold War, they were trying to see if there are some uh, thorium or uranium, plutonium, etc. on the moon. So whoever will occupy the moon, moon will basically uh, yes, we have the supremacy on the earth. Uh, so there are military application also. Then there could be biological application, biological warfare. The, is there some kind of uh, bacteria or virus in moon? which may be used uh, to kill enemies, for example. Okay. So, the, as you know that uh, when the Apollo space, uh, Apollo, um, uh, let us say 11, when they landed and when they came back, they were quarantined for a long time, just to ensure that they, they do not carry the germs from the moon, which may contaminate the human being, human civilization. So, that kind of responsibility is also there for the country, who is going to send to the moon because they have to save the civilization also. So they found that the moon was not at all the as much dense as the, as the earth. So earth's density was let us say five and a half. They found that the moon's density is maybe 3.3 or something. Okay, much lighter than the earth. So naturally people realized that just after the Apollo missions people realized that the moon was not made at the same time as the as the earth. Okay. okay. If they were made together, they would have the same kind of composition, they would have the same kind of density and uh, etc., gravity, etc. But it turned out that moon's uh, the core, the iron core is very, very small compared to the core of the earth. Okay. So because of that, people, uh, people learned a lot, but naturally people still did not know why that there was water on the moon, 
then they are they whether in future colony could be made on the moon uh, so all the much more detailed aspects were not known x ray spectrometer today we use, use it to find out the minerals though in those days spectrometer was not available as easily and therefore all many of the studies which could be done in today's technology could not be done during those days so uh, we must go back and try to do the all over again a much more deeper study. Uh, but uh, why there was a uh, uh, 30 or 40 years gap? It took some time for us to absorb what we learned from the moon from the first few years. Okay. Okay, 1960s and 70s. We understood that what moon is all about, what to expect, what not to expect. And in the meantime, we had other priorities like Voyager. You have to remember that just after moon, NASA spent, NASA spent its resources for Voyager yes. 1, Voyager 2 and it went to various uh, 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 planets, uh, ultimately Uranus and then they left even the solar system. So people were not standing still, people were doing a lot of things and India particularly had other things to do. People, uh, India had, um, let us say, uh, remote sensing missions were much more important. For them the science and the moon was not that important. So, because there are mostly people at below poverty level and for them if something could be done using space research, that was the first priority of Indian Space Research Organization. So, remote sensing uh, IRS in the Indian remote sensing program was a major program. Telemedicine, telelearning, teleteaching, uh, to reach or to television, to send the television to every village in India. These were the more important priorities for India. Okay. So, because, so from both sides, People were busy and now slowly the momentum developed that look, we now can go to space to go to much distant star even. So maybe moon can be utilized for colonization and to start a space program from there. So a lot of uh, countries are now going back to um, moon. And second point you have to remember, that time only there were two superpowers, United States and Russia. Slowly China came up, India came up, Europe came up. So they said, why not all of us will also, go, let us go. So this time gap is just during the time the developing, so-called developing nations became developed nations and they also have their ambitious space program. So there was nothing wrong in the moon. Uh, progress was going on uh, in respective countries. But uh, so this gap was it. Uh, so how are our perspective about the moon changed after, uh, since the Apollo mission? So, you see, before Apollo mission, we used to think that the moon and the earth started simultaneously. They were born together about 4.6 billion years ago, just after the solar system was born. But after Apollo mission, people realized that after studying the, uh, you know, minerals and the uh, stones, uh, they, they, br they, brought, they brought thousands of kilograms of you know, rocks from moon. After analyzing them, people realized that the moon has been formed in a completely different way and after the earth was born maybe after about 10 million years to 20 to 100 million years the moon was born okay so the, the even the origin of moon the theory of origin of moon actually changed after the apollo missions so a lot of fundamental changes has taken place uh, about the hi history of the solar system history of the lunar science and uh, in general, I mean, so this is, it was good. So, uh, about the origin of the moon, uh, what is the present model about the origin? Well, the moon, as I said, that the earlier we used to think that the moon and the earth uh, were produced together, where they were the same time they were produced. But after uh, the Apollo mission found that the density, average density of the moon is very, very low. And very similar to like the upper upper crust of the earth, okay, like mostly silica, 3.2, 3.3 density. So people realize that the model has to be completely different. Moon must have been produced by the collision between the earth and a Mars-like planet. And that Mars-like planet actually hit the earth, took out some matter from the earth and which went out originally. And then they uh, gathered together again and in, in near what we call a Ross lobe, again, just outside the Ross lobe, gathered together and the large moon was created uh, roughly about uh, 100 million years after the earth was born. 
and that moon is slowly went to where it is today, about 400,000 kilometer away, and the, uh, the uh, it also slowed down, the spin slowed down, and uh, so that is the present model, and I think people are happy with the model. Why do we see uh, one side of the moon all the time? Well, this is very in interesting because if you see that the the moon, you will always see during the full moon or even crescent moon, that we are actually seeing the one side of the moon. Yeah. Sometimes it occurs wobbles. Sometimes the moon may become smaller because the distance of the moon may become larger. Yes. But uh, nevertheless, many, uh, it is always pointing to the earth, the same side. The simple reason is that the moon is rotating around its orbit, around the orbit, uh, around the earth. The uh, simple reason is that the moon is rotating around the earth the same t at the same time uh, it takes to rotate around itself. So the spin, spin time, 20, about 28 days, the same as the orbital time. Because of that one side of the moon is always facing to the earth. The reason uh, for this is of course because what is known as a tidal locking. Okay, The moon is locked with the earth for some reason. Mm -hmm. Exactly how it happens is very simple to uh, describe. The, suppose you take a liquid moon, assume that moon is made up of liquid and it is being attracted by the earth and it has been elongated, little bit wobbled. Okay, So as the moon moves, that the location of the wobble also is supposed to change, okay? Because the uh, because it is always pointing, so the, that wobble wobble is changing, and the um, uh, axis along which the gravity operates is also changing, okay? But this wobble is not being able to catch up with the speed uh, of the orbital motion. Because of that, there is a net torque applicable on the moon. Which, apply, which slows the moon down. And this is happening for almost 4 billion years. It is slowing the moon down from this original angular momentum and the spin that it started with. So to the extent that today that wobble that I am talking about is locked along the direction of the earth. It no longer changes location. Okay. And it is the lowest energy configuration. So because of that, the, uh, the moon is... Uh, totally tidally locked with this earth. There is one more system in the solar system called Pluto and its moon Charon. Uh, also they are tidally locked. Okay, tidally lock tidal locking is very natural and uh, uh, it goes to the lowest energy configuration. So that is why you see one side only. Uh, so what is deeply uh, ISRO's uh, Chandrayaan 2 mission? ISRO's Chandrayaan 2 mission um, is a very complicated mission and it is far more complex than the Chandrayaan 1 mission. Let me very briefly say that the Chandrayaan mission 1 mission, the actually PSLV rocket was used and very light weighted um, uh, weight, uh, uh, satellite was used and the satellite only did the, um, uh, had an orbiter. Chandrayaan 2 on the other hand is using GSLV Mark III uh, rocket to send a mammoth 3.8 ton um, equipment. Okay, out of that, 2.4 ton is the um, weight of the orbiter, 1.4 ton is the weight of the lander, a, and a piece of the equipment is actually going to land on the moon, and there is a 27 kilogram of rover which will come out of the lander and we will start roving around. Okay, It will move around and do some studies. So this is a very complex and ambitious mission of, of uh, ISRO and uh, on um, uh, it will be launched uh, July 15th and uh, it will be uh, the lander is going to land on moon on 6th of September almost uh, uh, two months after. Uh, so why it is taking so long? Well, the, the ISRO is trying to send, uh, ISRO is trying to be an over cautious probably and uh, you have to remember our heritage. Heritage was that uh, Chandrayaan 1 was sent by PSLV rocket mm -hmm. and Mongoljan also was sent by PSLV. 
and during both the times the orbit uh, orbits uh, the orbit of the satellite was gradually uh, increased the uh, the radi uh, axis of the distance of the orbit okay so apogee of the orbit was increased every time it came to um, uh, perigee the, the, the new thruster is used to give its uh, to raise its orbit we call it orbit raising okay, okay. so the after the, the orbit is raised to a larger distance then it comes back close to this uh, earth then it raised again it goes to even further distance and ultimately uh, uh, ultimately it reaches the lunar transfer orbit or lto after going to the lunar transfer orbit the uh, satellite ha had to be now uh, manu uh, maneuvered in such a way with appropriate number of thrusters so that it be it uh, starts uh, it capture it is captured by the moon first of all secondly the orbit becomes 100 km by 100 km circular orbit it stays there in the orbit for few few times okay it, it orbits the moon few times uh, at that orbit after that the orbit is reduced uh, in an elliptical orbit of 30 km by 100 km okay, okay. once that orbit is uh, achieved it is easier for the lander to land from 30 km to lunar surface and that will take about 15 minutes uh, you know by by first break the uh, first by first breaking and then final breaking the lander actually slowly land on the moon you have to remember the relative velocity between the lander and the moon should be of the order of 1 meter per second it has to be it has to slow down very much so because of that you have to do thruster you know opposite direction to ensure that it is not crashing on the moon and uh, so it takes time it, the whole procedure takes time and the isro is uh, not taking any chances okay. thank you uh, what would be the achievements of this mission well the uh, if you see the list of equipments which are going to the um, uh, to chandrayaan 2 mission this is already a very impressive number of equipments. That is point number one. That is a scientific achievement. But even before that, the fact that India is going to do soft landing on moon, which it has never done, and that is that itself is a great achievement. Because if it can achieve that soft landing on the moon, it will be doing the same thing on Mars and it will be doing the same thing on the other planets. And so India's um, scientific horizon will expand. Okay. So, and also the Chandrayaan 2 is going to land very close to the South Pole, about 70 degrees south, and where uh, the, the people have not yet quite studied that region. Almost all the missions have been near the equatorial plane, at the safe place, okay? A lot of sunshine and a lot of uh, visibility, communication is easier, and this South Pole region is much more difficult and much more uncharted territory. So, and, uh, but India is going to go there mostly because there are lo lots of um, uh, ice, water ice in that region. So, if we want to colonize someday, then we definitely want to have lots of water and it is better to find out, uh, find them out well ahead of time. So, I think that the, the, on the one hand, there are a lot of, uh, you know, pride, the fact that we are the first one. See, once we soft land, we will be the fourth country in the world to have done so, okay, after United States and Russia and uh, uh, Japan and uh, our uh, uh, China. But uh, not only that, India is now going to become a part of its knowledge base, is, will be shared by the whole, whole humanity forever. So it is now, it is contributing to, to it, also it is like to purchase a seat in the a, a, a seat in a uh, high powered yeah high powered uh, committee and uh, because it is now po powerful enough to do such and such uh, you know uh, space uh, uh, activities so i think india is trying to do it is a multi dimensional it is you cannot just look at it as a military purpose or a scientific purpose or psychological purpose it is a multi dimensional uh, factors are there for this Chandrayaan 2 mission. Okay. And uh, uh, so, Professor Chakraborty, uh, about the instruments, uh, what would the function of the equi equipments uh, in the satellite? Well, uh, you know, uh, in India we don't have many 
uh, a large scientific community mm -hmm. uh, to actually do lunar science, to be honest with you. There are only physical research laboratory, space research laboratory uh, so, uh, in uh, Vikram Sarabhai or ACC in Ahmedabad. Two, three places only planetary science is done. So, uh, there is not a huge scientific community which will be benefited by the uh, equipments that are being sent. But that is uh, probably if there are much larger number of departments and much more diversified equipments could have been sent. This time they are sending more or less similar equipments which uh, also went by Chandrayaan 1 uh, in orbiter. Okay? So this orbiter is carrying 8 equipments. One of the major equipments that the orbiter is carrying is called large area soft X-ray spectrometer. Okay? This is a very, uh, this is in or orbit mm -hmm. and what its job is that if there is X-ray falling onto the lunar surface, then they are going to excite the, um, um, you know, minerals and the material, materials and there will be fluorescence lines, etc. And so that fluorescent lines can be detected by the uh, spectrometer. So the, then we can, uh, we can also get the mineralogy mapping through X-ray studies. Then there is an L and S band synthetic aperture radar, radar or SAR. That equipment also went to Chandrayaan 1. And the job here is to again to find out the water. That time also they also found the water line. Yeah. Here they are going a place where there is mostly water. Mm -hmm. So the orbiter will definitely be orbiting on that region. And therefore we will have a huge amount of data on all these um, items below the orbiter. Then there is a spectrometer which is going to give you wide um, wavelength range for the study of the minerals and also the water with our hydroxyls group etc. Then neutral uh, mass spectrometer there is one they are going to send that the all kinds of cosmic rays that they that is going to fall onto the moon the, you can study how many of them are uh, iron uh, per second suppose you take the data how many of them are iron nuclei how many of them are magnesium nuclei or how many of them are uh, nit you know, neutrons. So mass spectrometer gives you the all kinds of masses and their isotopes which are going to fall onto the moon. So that tells you the cos cosmic composition, basically the composition of the co cosmic rays which are directly hitting on the moon. In our case earth has an atmosphere, so uh, these things are also hitting the earth but the atmosphere is interacting with them before we actually catch them. Most of the cases, but the moon has no atmosphere, so we will be able to catch them uh, yeah, directly raw data. Okay. The next uh, data uh, apparatus, terrain mapping camera, that is also a 3D camera. It was also sent earlier, so Chandrayaan one. Yes. So, uh, in orbiter is generally taking the same kind of equipment that it sent Sorry. earlier. Yeah, it was. Uh, of course, there were some other equipments taken from other countries, but this this time uh, story is different. But uh, this lander, which is now going to land on the moon, is carrying completely different kind of equipment, which were not taken by Chandrayaan 1. For example, they are going to take a, a seismometer, seismometer. Seismometer is to find out whether the moon is actually having a moon quake, like earthquake. Like. Whether the, the moon is a moon, the, why does it, why do you want to know that? Because quakes takes place only when your core is still active. Okay. Suppose your core is still molten, mm. okay, molten lava. And therefore, there will be quakes. So if the moon is a dead object, then, then there will be no quake. Okay. So, moon quake is very exciting to find out the internal structure of the moon. So, that is a very equipment, very good equipment. There is a thermal probe which estimates the uh, measures the temperature on the lunar surface, how the temperature varies from uh, as the sunshine goes to you know from the sunshine uh, sunlit area to uh, dark area. So that is how the temperature is actually varying. How long does it take the temperature to go from highest possible temperature to lowest possible temperature? That will tell you about the specific heat of the system, the nature of the rock. So all the uh, mineralogy uh, and the geology of the moon will come out of this mission. So there is a well thought of mission. There is a radio occultation experiment and total electron content. There is a laser retro reflector array which uh, NASA has given ISRO to take carry along with it and it's a small array whose job is to find out the distance of the uh, moon from earth not the moon as a whole but at least the distance of the uh, place where that retroactive array has been kept and prefer this is presumably the same place where the lander will be landing 
So uh, equipment wise is very large. There is one very good equipment that uh, rover is carrying because rover can now move around and, and touch various rocks. It has a different equipment. It has an alpha particle uh, scattering X-ray equipment. So it injects alpha and it, it excites the uh, rock material and the fluorescent line will produce uh, X-ray lines. So you get the rock material by first interacting with the interacting with alpha particle, alpha radiation. So this is also here you artificially send the radiation and find out the fluorescence. The X-ray spectrometer on, in the orbiter it depends on, it is actually using the solar X-ray uh, as an uh, injected photon and then the irradiated fluorescent line. In this case, the alpha hits the uh, rock and the fluorescent line comes out. It's injected. Injected. So you go to different rock, you touch different rock, you get the different excited lines and so you would uh, know what rock it is. This is a good, good start. Uh, in Chandrayaan 1, uh, many countries participated. Uh, which countries are participating uh, in this mission? See, uh, that time in Chandrajan 1, India was sending for the first time mm -hmm. and the um, uh, equipments were not sufficiently uh, heavy duty equipments and lot of other countries also did not go to moon for a long time. As you know that the, after 1970s, virtually nobody went back. So they uh, found that the India was going why not also send and serve equipments with Indian, Indian okay. Chandrayaan? So there was some kind of, from both sides, there was a need. India also wanted to have more friends supporting its program. And others also wanted India to take care of their payloads. Okay. So there was a very good um, set of number of countries actually joined. This time, it was not a question of joining. I mean, India is more mature. India has large number of equipments which... Uh, it has made and all of them are supposed to function. There is no reason why others should uh, join. India's equipments are already very heavy. Lander, as I pointed out, the, the entire program itself is about four ton uh, heavy. And India cannot afford to uh, take uh, equipment of other countries. Really, there is no space. Mm -hmm. And uh, as you know that India, uh, Chandujan 1 was sent by PSLV rocket, mm -hmm. which could hardly send 1500 uh, kilograms. Now we are sending 4,000 kilograms with GSLV Mark III rocket. Even few months ago, people thought that uh, it, will be, it will go with GSLV Mark II. But lander uh, was made more robust and lander's weight also increased. So Mark III rocket was chosen. We really have no space to take anybody else's payload. Okay. So it is uh, good in some sense. Of course, India is taking a small retro reflector from NASA which will allow um, uh, them to calculate the mass of the moon very precisely. And, but India is also taking the help of the deep space network that NASA has, which is very deep indeed. As you know that even Voyager 1, Voyager 2, which left the solar system, uh, American uh, deep space network is still tracking them. So this space, deep space network, India will be utilizing to precisely locate the uh, payload, this satellite, and because time to time the orbit orbit has to be maneuvered, so time to time you have to uh, thrust, uh, you know, apply the thruster, precise amount of thruster so that it is transferred from one orbit to another. For this, you require extraordinary precision. You have to remember that you are you are changing the orbit of an equipment which itself is moving with uh, thousands of kilometers per hour if not the, you know, few hundred thousand kilometers per hour. So that fastest, that kind of fast motion the satellite has, at the same time you want to change its orbit. So any small error will take it to completely different orbit. And you have to be very careful. So that is how India is uh, taking cooperation from uh, America. And of course it is paying for it. And uh, that is the only major collaboration in this particular mission. Uh, Rohar is expected to operate uh, only up to uh, 14 days. Uh, why this is so? See, the Rohar um, uh, is, oper is supposed to operate for 14 days because at a given space, given spot on the moon, mm -hmm. sunlight actually falls maximum for 14 days. Okay. Next 14 days, there will be no sunshine. Okay. Uh, yeah, it will be dark side. So it will be dark, it will be night. 
So the moon has uh, each day. Moon has about 28 days. Each f- spin or each full rotation around this axis, it takes 21, 28 days. Unlike the Earth, which takes only 24 hours. Okay. So just like in the case of Earth, there are 24 hours the whole day, but there are actually sun uh, signs for t- in 12 hours, and uh, there is no sun for 12 hours. In the case of Moon. The uh, whole day, a lunar day, is about 28 days. So out of that 14 days, there will be sunshine. 14 days, there will be no sunshine. And if there is no sunshine, then the rover, that the uh, solar panels on the rover cannot function. Okay. So therefore, uh, you expect the panel to function maximum of 14 days. And if there are possibility to keep them in a coma, comatic condition, minimal. Energy somehow with a charged battery or something, so that they can survive somehow in a comatic state for 14 days. Then after 14 days they can be revived and they will start continuing. The rover will start operating. So that happens in other countries. They do it like even the Mars or as you know that they keep on moving. But in the case of um, uh, lunar rover. Uh, I think that is the reason why the 14 days is the, the limited period. But still, I would consider the Earth. It is much better than having a satellite on the on the Earth. See, Earth. If I send an artificial satellite, then it goes around the Earth in one and a half hours. So you get 45 minutes of uh, view of a star, and 45 of view it is occulted by the Earth. There, from any point on the Moon, you can see any star for 14 days. Sim- continuously, so you can do much better science. You can do lot of good science from moon, which you could not be doing from the oh. Earth. Yes, uh, that's a natural satellite. So why not take all the payloads and put it there? Okay. So I would rather prefer that do science from the moon, uh, than of course and of the moon also, okay. because if you are not satisfied yet, but from the moon, lot of potential. You can have uh, water. That water you can do electrolysis. You can get oxygen from that, and you can survive with that oxygen. You can get oxygen and uh, hydrogen and use them as fuel to launch new vehicles from there. Go to the nearest star, and the gravity is very weak, so you don't need much fuel to get out of the gravity of the moon. So there are a lot of advantages of of science from the moon. Okay, so I think that uh, all these things will come slowly. And India's mission will certainly add lot of knowledge into human, uh, you know, into our uh, vocabulary, to our dictionary, to our scientific, uh, you know, endeavour. So I think that we are all looking forward to this mission. Thank you, Professor Chakraborty, uh, for uh, discussing with us. Uh, we have learned a lot, and hope you will also enjoy it. Thank you. If you like this discussion, please comment and hit the subscribe button. Thank you.